Are you looking for a stripper? A stripper that really gets it off? Coopers. The stripper that gets it off every time. Check this out, guys. Ooh. Is that good? Wow. Well, today's a little bit of a treat. I discovered this yesterday in this friendly antique dealer from Dannyburg called William. Said I could borrow this as long as I didn't damage it. Uh, anyway, um, I want to tell you, what, I want to put a little bit more stripper on here and then I'm going to show you the inside. Which side should I do? Oh, it's better here. So this is the stripper on. I'll put some on here as well. So our stripper is very thin. We make it thin so that it absorbs. You can see instantly it just goes into this sort of shellacky old varnish. It just drinks straight in. But it doesn't do any damage to the timber. And in this case, it's veneer. You can actually see right at this tip here, it's a little bit um, springy. And so, but it's not gonna suddenly peel everything off. So it's ideal for antiques where there's, not everything's as solid as it once was. Now on our guide, which I'll show you shortly, it says, put the stripper on and keep the surface wet until it's done its thing. And just put it there. So, So, step one, strip what's on the surface, and so it says stripper, apply the stripper, wait for it to do its thing. In the case of this sort of varnish, it's two to five minutes, and it says keep the surface wet with stripper, which I've just done. It's not that it's evaporated, it's just that it's gone in to the surface. And so we'll just keep a, an eye on that. I can see in the light that these little absorbed bits. And looks all right. Okay. On with the story. So, how easy, I think. If you can do a major zoom into our little dog there. So, this is a very, very famous logo, and I was doing a little bit of Wikipediaing on it, and um, and I've always seen it and thought it looked pretty cool, and wondered why it had his head in the horn bit. Um, and there's a whole reason to all this. So. This painting was done by a chap in England uh, called Francis. And um, he inherited, when his brother Mark died, um, this dog. It's a, um, it's a terrier. I've got it written down so I don't get it all wrong. It's a Jack Terrier. And his name is Nipper. Anyway, uh, he also inherited with the dog this um, phonograph. Um, the, um, and his dead brother had um, done different recordings and things and every time the dog heard the recordings he remembered his master his master's voice and went up and listened to it and so the artist Francis decided that this would make a great painting which he did um, and he did it in 1899 so that was way back then anyway being an entrepreneur he obviously um, he, he sold it to a newly formed uh, record company and as part of it they asked him to um, do a little bit of a change to it and make a, um, a, a disc one right, hang up, um, rather than the phonogram that it originally was and, and on it went and it became iconic with, with music nowadays it's used more for classical music but EMI they um, made a bronze of it all and they every time one of their um, people that record um, hit a hundred thousand um, albums um, they would get awarded it so that was Nipper the dog anything else with it um, no so I thought that was pretty cool never really understood why it was called his master's voice but I do now so that's a little treat for you guys and girls so back to the action so you saw the brush when we first started so let's show you how we take it off the top. 
So just an ordinary spatula. This is one we have. Um, and with these sort of soft, mushy varnishes, check this out. I always use a dragging action. I never push. Oop. Yeah. It looks great on TV, doesn't it? Tell you what I'll do. I'll change the direction. This is what live streams all about. You get to see all the oopses as you go. Off, just give it a quick wipe and then again as we came into the video don't really want to splash it all over the wall so we'll just turn it the strip is virtually pH neutral so it's ideal for antiques and this this is a very Good example there's so many things that you could apply these um, the system to this is oak um, these are curved moldings so all sorts of stuff very 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 easy to restore using this this was one of the original uses for the product when I first developed it and it was for antique restoration you want to be able to remove the finish if it needed and uh, but you don't want to damage the the character away the, the patina and um, so back around so that's part one complete which is taking off what's on the surface so what we do now is we give it another squirt this is part two and I'll show you that on the guide in a moment Give that a minute or two. Okay. So, part two is about stripping what's in the surface. So, the um, uh, the first coats of stain and varnish soaked into the grain, and we want to um, get those out as much as possible. So, we put the stripper on, wait a couple of minutes, and then we give it a scrub with the correct scrubbing material, which is very ambiguous, which I'll explain more. And then we'll wipe away the residues, so let's um, do that. You saw me use the brush originally, um, that was seemed to be appropriate for the job. Um, we also have a, um, a European steel wool. This is um, a long grain uh, wool and it's ideal for this sort of job. So we basically give it a light massage scrub in the direction of the grain. Don't go in circles or across the grain. When you're getting to the edges like this, don't pull that way. You might grab something and tear a bit of an ear, so sort of take it off. That way you're not going to have any disasters. And it forms itself well to the shape. don't want it to come back to blonde oak to white we want it actually to retain some of the color it sort of gives it that antique appeal good and then we move on to part three which you might have seen before 
was blue and that's uh, flushing the surface clean and um, so we the liquid's blue and this is our flusher it's a um, a rinse it's not water it's um, it's a paraffin based spirit which is slow drying which gives us more scrub time if you use meths or thinners one thing with thinners is it stinks so you have to work outside with it um, and also with meths you, you find that it dries so fast you um, don't have much time to work with it before everything starts going back in so So all the stuff that's, all the residues that we have liquefied, they can come off onto the rag. And this is the part that means no sanding. And that's what Cooper's is about. Anyone that is sanded generally forms a very quick hatred for it. And this is what they, I'm interesting with our products. Now our products are available worldwide. You um, just go up there to the little bin thing up there. It says cooperstripclub.com. Um, that's our website and all our products are listed on there. And uh, for anyone outside of New Zealand, we air freight all over the place. So wherever, anywhere the DHL goes, this goes. And we supply most of our products come in packs, so you get the stripper and flusher and all, all the other bits and bobs you need. But you can check out the packs online. Okay, then we just do a little final swizz with the um, with the brush. We call these brushes our detail brushes, just these little bits here. I started with the brush to start with, but this is where they're normally used. It's all looking good. Now, we have a saying, and that is, the wet look is the finish look. And what that is, is this. So you see that colour there, and on the top, if I was to finish this, with a, with a shellac or a wax or oil, that's what you're gonna get. And um, might be able to get a little bit of that corner after so we can see the before and after. It's a pretty extreme difference. And so that's what you'd get and you'd go, okay, that's me, that's cool. We'll have that, so no one, no sanding required to get to it. If you start sanding veneers, there's a really, really good chance that you start sanding through things, and you, again, you lose all the character and stuff, and be avoided where possible. Now, I want to just quickly talk about our finish. We don't use it on everything. If you've watched a few of these videos, you'll think we use it on everything, but we don't. Um, it's, it is, however, um, quite good for lots of things. So this is our moisturizer. This is a blend of gum, oil and wax. It's a uh, like a skincare for wood and it's um, it's gonna give this its first feed it's had in a hundred years and uh, so this is what you do. Now if you want to stick with the shellacs and go back to the original finish that's fine. Don't do the moisturizer. If you're this is still a very, very authentic antique finish. You just slap that on. Don't have to be good with it. You don't have to have lots of polishing experience. If it looked good with that wet flush color, then you know the moisturizer is gonna give you that. Doesn't matter how hot it is, cold it is, dusty it is, humid it is, you just bang this on. Now, that stays on there for two days and 
it can be left on there for two weeks, doesn't matter. Um, it's just drinking. It's not going to dry like a normal finish, it's just going to absorb and absorb and absorb. And what you do is the next day is you check it out and if there's any parts of it that are fully absorbed, um, pretty much you'll find that on things like um, end grains. Um, but if it's still looking wet, just leave it alone. Now, after a couple of days, what you do is you come back to it with a dry cloth and you simply remove the surplus. And this edge is amazing. When I saw this yesterday, I thought, ooh, this will come out well. Hopefully, William at the antique store is happy. Because he's got lots more treats that I saw there yesterday. And I can show you in the future. Okay. So that team is it. And that's Cooper's. And it'll take off any paint, any varnish, off any surface, and it takes advantage of the sanding that is already there. Um, we'll be back in three mornings time because here it's Friday. And so having Saturday, Sunday off, and then back on Monday to do the same, same time, which in uh, England, I believe, is 10 or 11 o'clock, thereabouts. So anyone that knows anyone around there, get them to know about it in New York, it's um, 6, uh, 6 p.m. Australia, depending on what side you're on, is 8 a.m. And here it is 10 a.m. So thanks for tuning in, if that's what you do on the internet. And we'll see you in three mornings time, same time. Cheers.